Hello everybody, welcome back to Shane Squirrel Shack. I want to thank all of you for tuning in to today's video. Today we're going to be talking about autism in sports. What was it like being an autistic in sports? Did it help me at all? Uh, kind of just my experience, stories, and all of that fun stuff about it. So, I haven't made a video in a while. For those who are new, this doesn't matter, but I was looking through the comments, wanting to make a new video, get back into doing Squirrel Shack stuff, and I'm like, okay. What's well, something that I can just kind of go right into and just kind of talk to you guys about, you know, just kind of warming back up into, you know, making videos. All right, enough of that. So, as an autistic, the question is, has sports helped me, you know, develop and kind of overcome some things and just kind of worked for the better of me? Long-term answer, yes. But is it for everyone? Well, that's subjective. So, I want to start by kind of talking about my early years as an autistic and being introduced to sports or so-called team activity. And for those of you who know us autistics, we really don't like sharing, doing teamwork or any of that. At least that's the stigma. So again, we're going we're gonna to rewind the little VCR tape back to 2000 when I was three years old. So from my recollection, my first experience with sports was swimming lessons. No, geez, Shane, that's not really a sport. But I was in a swimming lessons at a big swimming, like, like a big recreational place in Chicago. So we have a lot of people in this swimming class. We probably had, from what I remember, at least 20, maybe around there. So... It was an intense social setting for me, being three, four, maybe five years old, and being in this group of kids, I had no idea who they were. Granted, I don't remember any of them, but I had a hard time with the idea of teamwork. Now, an example of this is, isn't just swimming with people. I think where I really, I didn't like to fit in, I didn't like to do what everyone else was doing, so call me the first hipster. So, I remember we did this swimming lessons play that, you know, we did a play out of what we learned from swimming lessons. I think we were all in arm floaties, though, granted. It was called 101 Dalmatians. Now, you might be asking, wait, how do you make a 101 Dalmatians play out of swimming lessons? Now, it's interesting. So, we were all the Dalmatians, and the swimming, lesson, the swimming teachers were all, I forget the name, Koala DeVille's kind of sidekicks that captured all the Dalmatians. And how they captured us was they would just throw us into the pool. Something like that. Now, all of the swimmers, they all wore these little, like, you know, the swimming head caps. They all wore Dalmatian tops. Now, in retrospect, I think it might have been a sensory thing. It just me not wanting to do what everyone else did. But now, actually making this video, I think it was a sensory thing. I was the only one who didn't wear the cap. And I th think, I remember it was like a really, we were having a really hard time trying to get me to wear the cap. And, end of story, I didn't wear the cap. So, that's my first experience with kind of like a team setting and like a sports-based setting. Now, let's fast forward a couple years. Now I'm about seven years old, you know, I'm in, let's say, second grade. And we had this neighborhood soccer team. And... We would go, you know, we had our teams, we would go against other teams in the neighborhood. And when I would do soccer, God, I did not like the idea of being a part of a team. I didn't like working with other kids. I like to be by myself. So when the, someone would kick the soccer ball towards me, I kind of on the other way, like, oh no, I don't want people coming by me. Oh my God. Oh my God. I was the kind of guy, like, if the ball, like, Shane, you, headbutt or whatever you call it. Down to the ground I went. It was just like I had no interest in being in that soccer team at all. I think I remember just even being on the field, just hanging by the sidelines. Like, I'm good. I'm good over here. So, fast forward a couple more years. I'm now nine years old. I moved to a new school, new state, all of that. And I remember like the first week or two at this new school, we had PE class. And we did this game called Foursquare. Now, a lot of y'all remember Foursquare. And you're in these Foursquares, and you're, like, passing this, like, ball around, trying to keep it in your square. And if you drop it, I think, you think you lose it. Something like that. It's been a minute. 
I wouldn't let anyone into my square in four square, like into my little setup. Like everyone had like their four people in their four square or whatever. But all I remember is the phone call from my gym teacher that night. I remember I got home, got off the bus, went up the driveway. My mom like grabbed my hand, walked me over to the messaging machine, the voice messaging machine on a landline phone at the time. And there's the message from my gym teacher saying how I wouldn't, how I wasn't getting along with the kids and letting them play four square with me. So let's use that as a, let's use that as like, what do, what do you call it? Like, oh, whatever, like, let's use that as like a timestamp. So that's where I was when I was nine years old. I tried to do sports kind of growing up, going into middle school, because at that point, I kind of wanted to be a part of something. Now, if you saw my video about my experience of middle school, you'll know that I was a very isolated kid. I kind of hung up by the sides during recess. I didn't really have a lot of friends, really any friends. And just the idea, I, I finally was like at a point like I want to be recognized for something. Now granted, I tried out for almost every sport, basketball, volleyball, softball. I didn't make any teams. I actually think I broke, I never got checked out, but I think I broke my thumb during the softball trial. The ball just kind of went right from my thumb. Granted, I didn't make any of those teams, even like the lowest grade teams. So we had like A team, B team, C team, A was like varsity, B, J, V, and C was like, I will let him in for like the, the participation reward kind of thing. I didn't even make that. The only thing that I did was track. And that was just anyone could do it. I remember I, I liked track because I could kind of do my own thing. I didn't have to worry about too much team effort. Because you were just running for yourself. You know, you had the team spirit in mind. Like, yeah, we're running to get the most points possible as a team. Stick with your teammates and try and pass other kids on the track. You know, something like that. Now, at the time, I wasn't very fast. I had it in me, but I just didn't at the same time. I remember being, like, last place in a race and my coach was like, just, just clap for the kid. He's finishing him. We all know he sucks, but just clap for him. Make him feel good. Make him feel good. Now, let's keep track in mind. Let's keep that, let's keep track of track. So now we're going into high school. And I kind of found out, like, I actually like running. It was almost kind of like a relief for me. And I was like, I'm going to, well, also, I had this crush on this girl who is a runner. And I wanted to join the cross country team just to get to know her a little more. So I went to the summer, the, 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 the preseason runs, getting to know like all the high schoolers. This was my freshman year. So this was how I got to meet what would be a majority of my friends going through the next four years of life. Now, I remember when I would do, when I was a freshman, I was exposed to this team of 90 runners. Now going from someone who didn't, had a hard time being on a team, to being in this team with 90 other people, I actually really liked it. At that point in time, that's when I was really like, okay, I'm going to say watch me to all the haters who didn't think I could be amount much to my autism. I'm not trying to say Fuck the haters or anything like that. But, you know, at that point I wanted to try and, you know, prove others wrong, watch me kind of thing. So, with that in mind, I was like, okay, I'm going to be on this team and I'm going to be... Vocity boy. Vocity boy. Now, you know, if you see my speech impairment videos, y'all know I have a hard time with my R's. So I kind of got picked on by the older senior kids, you know. He's like, he's going to be a Vocity boy. He's going to be a Vocity boy. Brooklyn Bronx is going to be a Vocity boy. So I was like, okay, you're going to laugh at me like that. I'm going to be, I'm going to be, I'm going to be one of your top runners in a few years. Okay. Okay. Watch me guys. Watch me. That next season in track, because I did cross country in the fall, spring in the track, I w made the varsity team. I was climbing up the ranks like that, that, that. But I didn't express it in the right way. I was kind of cocky about it. I didn't know how to be a supportive teammate at the time, demonstrating proper social skills. I was trying to prove, like, say, like, oh, I'm better than you. I'm better than you. Ha ha. So my social skills wasn't quite there yet. And everyone knew that, oh, he's the autistic kid, whatever. Because I still, was, I still would do... 
you know, sp my speeches on autism, because I was very vocal about that at the time. I'll go into more detail on that in another video. But, um, so everyone knew, but now we're just like, okay, just let the autistic do his thing. Okay, we'll just let him do his thing. Now, sophomore year, now I'm on the varsity team. And I remember the first meet I made varsity, I texted on Facebook the guys who doubted me. I was like, I'm on varsity now, you know, a little cocky 15 year old Shane. And eventually, oh, let's fast forward a little bit. So now, senior year, I'm one of the fastest runners in the state. I was the team captain. I was like number two in our team because our number one, we would kind of flip back and forth, was a very, very respectable runner who I'm still friends with today. And I have nothing but respect for the guy. I mean, he's a, he's a good person, you know, he was a great person that really pushed me on the team. So I had nothing but respect for him. And I'm still friends with a lot of people who I was on varsity with growing up. So it was a great way to make friends. And I'm very fortunate that I've been able to maintain a lot of those relationships going seven years out of high school, 10 years since I joined varsity. So that's really cool. That's really cool I was able to do that. So, and eventually I was one of the fastest, I, I was breaking school records at this point. I was being looked at by other colleges, this and that. And where I made the mistake was I let sports take over what my other passions was. And that was music. I should have gone to college to pursue music. And I didn't. I let sports take over me. And that's when I became very misdirected. Because I didn't know what I really wanted to do. I didn't trust my future. And then when the coach of UW Wisconsin, Oshkosh, reached out to me, came to my meet, scouted me out. I'm like, okay, there's someone who thinks, who's 20 years older than me, who has a better insight on life, I'll trust him. So I dropped everything I wanted to do, and I became a very, very, very small-time collegiate runner. That lasted two weeks after I went into college because my mental health went to crap, and I had dropped out of school. So my college career was short-lived at that time, but... I, I say that it, sports really helped me with my social skills, my team building skills. And you can almost say that in a way it's therapeutic. So when I say therapeutic, I'm not saying every therapeutic form of stimulus or experience has to be like, oh, it's a therapeutic oh, shoulder massage, man. Oh, the, 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 the heated coals or rocks or whatever they are, you know? Sometimes it's a slap in the face and a kick in the balls, you know, and you're like, you, you, they, you get used to it. And I was like, oh, okay, that was easy. <laughs> so now I'm on my third college. I'm 20 years old now, and I wanted to do this, uh, you know, race that my, the university I was at at the time was. I went to UW-Wisconsin-Stevens Point. So I went there, I did a, I signed up for this race I ran unattached with. The coach apparently knew of me, he was like, you want to join our team? You know, new to this university looking for a sense of direction. Because I was like, yeah, I joined this team. And I was, I was the odd one out. I mean, so everyone knew what was up. My coach knew I was autistic. We had conversations later. But that was probably the hardest experience for me was college running at UW-Stevens Point. That whole college experience was a mess. I actually think I'm going to make a video on that next. So, there's some time. But, that was a very short-lived career as well. I just didn't fit in with the team. And my mental health continued to go down the crapper. And in a, another video, I'll talk about my bipolar diagnosis that came shortly after I left the team. Because it was, the, the, the team structure was also very toxic at the same time. It was very much like, your sports comes above any other activity you want to partake in in the university, and just as much as important, if not more, than your academics. And I'm like, Leo, this is a D3 school. Why are you putting so much pressure on us? And even in my first couple of races back, when I was like not even working out, I was faster than half the kids on that team. Well guys on that team. We're not kids anymore. I mean, they're drinking on the weekends. But again, I'll say that's my 20 years in sports, my 15 years in sports proved very helpful for my development. Did it make me perfect? No, does no, no one's perfect. You know, I still have at 25. I still have work as an autistic and I'm not, I don't think I'm going to get much of that with sports. 
it's going to come from other aspects of life, but I take a lot of what I learned from my experiences with sports and I cherish that and I respect those moments where I developed and I overcame my fears and my, my obstacles. So with that, I end the video at, with the question, is it right for you? If you're an autistic, is it right for you? I think it's huge. And I think we need to have the conversation of how do we introduce someone who's autistic to a team where they're, in a sense, using that as an experience to help with social skills. How do we talk to kids nowadays who might not be autistic and we're introducing someone on the spectrum to their team or whatever that might be? So, I mean, and that's something I'm really hoping that this younger generation is able to partake on and parents are able to in have better conversations about mental health awareness with kids. And I've noticed a change in that kids are more accepting of those with disabilities. And I, I really hope that trend goes on. So I guess that's all I have to say about that before this turns into a ramble. Sports really helped me out. I think it could help most people with autism out. It depends, you know, on the spectrum. Everyone's different. There's, you know, no two cases are the same. But parents or whoever, if you have a child who's autistic, highly consider sports for them. That's all I got to say about that, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Shane Squirrel Shack. And we'll be back. Thank you.